Hi guys and welcome to the next video. So in the previous video uh, we spoke a little bit about the bug edit and today uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, background logic. So uh, we're going to talk about what the background logic is, uh, how to program it, how to use it and what possibilities it gives you. Ready? Let's get started. All right, so uh, let's talk about the background uh, logic. What is a background logic? So basically it's a logic uh, that can run or will run in a robot all the time in a loop. So basically it's a program that you will create and you will put label one at the beginning, jump label one in the end, and the program will keep looping all the time uh, when the robot is running. So what is the difference between a uh, program that you will run with a jump label and the background edict because that might be a good question. So the jump label program is going to run only uh, when a program is running, when you're actually executing a program. The background logic then doesn't care about if the program is running or not. The background logic runs all the time. So if you want to monitor something constantly or you want to uh, notify PLC or the robot about something, uh, even though the robot doesn't run, you'll go, you want to use the background logic for it. So basically, uh, you guys need to remember that the background logic will run all the time and it's going to send outputs, uh, it's going to uh, send flags, whatever you want, constantly, regardless of the robot's state. Well, of course, if you're going to power down the robot, the background logic won't work. But what I mean is, uh, regardless of what program you're running or if you're running a program, the background lo logic is independent, it is going to run anyway. So where do you find your background logic, guys? Uh, you're going to hit the menu button, you're going to get to setup, and you can find the background logic over there. And as you can see, there are quite few uh, options or quite few places to put your background logic programs. As you can see, uh, also the background logic has quite a few states. It can be run, it can be uh, stopped, or there can be an error as well that it won't allow it to run. You will ask me, okay, Pablo, so what are the options uh, for that background logic? So let's say you wanna uh, send to the robot the current position of your clamps. You can do it uh, also in other way by set, uh, setting the uh, interconnect, but maybe there is some more complex logic uh, that you cannot use the interconnect for and you need a background logic. Because let's say uh, you wanna, you have uh, a set of clamps, so it's going to be like five clamps, and that will mean that the gripper is closed. And then you wanna check at the five clamps and say that the gripper is open and you just want the PLC to know either the gripper is closed or open. So you can program it using the background logic and you can put all of your uh, other logic statements there that is going to prevent it from running or it is going to run. Uh, we're going to do a few exercises to show you uh, how does it uh, look like, how does it work. You gotta remember that the background logic has some limitations and I'm going to talk about them uh, while we're going to make the exercises. So, Sometimes you won't be able to put some things inside the background logic because uh, it is limited. So uh, you might want to do uh, some run program during uh, your regular program that's going to monitor more things or will give you ability to do something else. Uh, but that's for later. Today we're just going to do the background logic. Ready? Let's go to the exercises. Hi guys and welcome to the exercises. So let's talk about the background logic. First, let me show you where to find the background logic. So you wanna hit the menu button, you wanna go to setup. Right after that, you can find your background logic. In my case, it's in here. You wanna hit enter and you're entering the background logic menu. Uh, as you can see, there are three columns in here. One will say program, next one is going to say status and the last one is going to say mode. 
So the first one is going to be the program that you will select to run as your background logic. The middle one is basically a status of it. Either it stop, or it started, then can be also an error. And uh, the last one is just a mode, either normal or high mode. So uh, how does this work, guys? So basically, you're going to select the program in here. You're going to change its, stand, uh, its status to uh, run mode. And then uh, your background logic is going to be active. So let's create the program right now. Let's put it into our background logic and let's see how that works. So you simply want to create a program. I already made one called uh, BG logic. I'm going to open it right now and let's create a simple statement in here. Uh, let's say, for example, you have a gripper that has three or four clamps and you want to constantly uh, monitor it monitor the state of those clamps and send, send it to the PLC. So uh, let's say we have three clamps and whenever all of them are closed, you just want to send the PLC, hey, the gripper is closed right now, all is fine. But you want to monitor this constantly. You don't want to just send once when you open or close the gripper, but uh, at any point at the robot, that the robot is at during the path, you just want to constantly send something to the PLC that's where you would use the background logic. So what you want to do basically is you want to create a digital output, let's say 100, and uh, you want to create a logic in here saying that that output is going to be on whenever digital output 100, uh, input 100 and digital input 101 and digital input 102 is on. So how that logic works basically is uh, saying that state of this digital output is equal to state of those three. So whenever this one is on, that one is on, and the last one is on, we are going to turn on the output 100. Uh, all right, uh, there is one thing you gotta remember uh, with selecting the background logic is whenever you're making a changes to background logic, uh, the program cannot be already running in a background logic. And when you want to enable it, you want to make sure that you don't have this program selected. So I have the program selected now. I'm going to show you what error you're going to see. So if you go to background logic and we want to right now choose the, the program uh, that we created. So I want to choose this one and I want to start, start it, it is going to say that there is an error and that the specified program is in use. That's because we have it open in here, we cannot have it open. So simply select a different program, go back, hit it run, and we will be running. That means uh, our program is already being executed constantly, it's like a jump label one all the time. Uh, so it's like a loop that uh, it goes through. And uh, as you can see, the robot is not running, so it doesn't mean so it doesn't matter for the robot. It, there is no need for it to run. Uh, it will always execute that program. So now let's see our uh, inputs and outputs, and uh, let's select here our digital inputs. Okay. As I remember, uh, what we did is we set uh, the. Let me open the program. Uh, that's our logic. So let's see what's going to happen if we are going to simulate and turn those inputs on. So if we have this input on, the second one and the third one, automatically we are turning our digital output 100 on because of our background logic. If we are going to lose any of the signal, we are automatically going to lose our output 100 which for, uh, for uh, in this example, let's say it's going to be the state of our gripper. So as you can see, doesn't matter which one you'll, you'll lose, you will always lose that signal. So that's how the background logic uh, works. As you can see right now, we still have it uh, active and running. There are some limitations to the background logic. There are a few things you cannot use in the background logic. Uh, also, you cannot edit the program that's currently running. So in order for us to make any changes into this program, we need to put our background, background logic to stop. We gotta go back to 
uh, our program and only then we can make changes. A uh, few of those things that you cannot do. You cannot call a program, you cannot use a wait instruction, you cannot uh, use jump label to jump backwards. You can all, uh, only jump forward. What I mean is if I create a jump label in here and I want to do it jump label one and if I'm going to put a label one in here, this is not correct instruction and our background logic will not execute. Let me show you uh, what I mean. So when we go now to the background logic, we try to execute it. We're going to have an error that we have an invalid item. Let's see the full error so you can understand. So we have a, a invalid item for uh, mixed logic at line number four. So what does it say? Let's go up, up to our uh, background logic. Uh, we go to line number four and he's saying that he doesn't like that jump label because like I said, we cannot jump uh, backwards, we can only jump forward. So if we we're going to delete this line and we're going to put our uh, label one in here, then you can jump from here to here and the background logic is going to like it. So let's reset default. Let's go back to our background logic menu. Let's run it and everything is fine right now. So whenever you guys have an error here, that means something is not okay. You got to take a look at which line of the code is it, correct it, and then you have your background logic. Uh, there are many other things you can do with the background logic, which I'm not going to uh, explain right now, guys. But I've, I, I hope that you see the potential of the background logic and how many things you can do with it. Uh, it's a very powerful uh, tool that you have in the Fanuc robots. So uh, have fun and use it. That's all for the exercises. Thank you. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. Like always, leave your comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe, like it, and like always, see you in the next video. Bye bye.